You're listening to the Next Gen Profits podcast live from, well, let's hope I don't slaughter this, Roskilde, Denmark. I'm sure all my Danish friends out there will let me know whether I said that right or wrong. But we're here, your spiritual parents, Craig, and Colette Toch. And today, guys, we have a message of empowerment mm. and revival for you because we're speaking to all our Next Gen Profit champions. Thank you. Today, we had the opportunity to walk around Denmark and uh, Copenhagen in particular, and we made it for the changing of the guard at the palace. What an affair. It was absolutely gorgeous. We got to see the Queen's Palace and where the Crown mm -hmm. Prince lives as well. Mm -hmm. And as I watched these soldiers changing of the guard, marching in step and mm -hmm. finding their place outside the palace to guard the Queen... I started pondering on our role as prophets oh, that's good. in the yes. kingdom of God and how God calls us, commissions us mm -hmm. to his service as well. That's right. And I just started going over all the experiences we've had here in Europe. I mean, we were mm -hmm. in London and then we were in uh, Northern Ireland and now Denmark. And I realized, you know, there's a lot of confusion in the church and especially, especially mm. in the prophetic move, not yes. just the church, yes. you guys. Yes. But in the prophetic move, there's a huge misunderstanding mm. between the power of the anointing, right. the work of the devil, mm. and just our human emotionalism. So mm. this week, we want to take you guys by the hand and see if we can help equip you a little bit because yes. sometimes we mistake emotionalism for the anointing. Oh, that's good. Yes. And sometimes yes. we mistake oppression for the anointing because of how mm. it makes it feel. So yes. for the next three podcasts, we're going to pull these three subjects apart. Mm. But today I want to talk specifically on the anointing. Mm. The anointing is what dresses us for service. Oh, so good. And I want to jump right into the subject by reading you a passage out of the book of Psalms. Psalms 133 verse 2. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, mm. running down the edge of his garments. Mm. Now, when I say anointing, and then I read the scripture out to you guys, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yep. We're talking about what the anointing feels like. Exactly. But as Craig and I were talking about the subject of the anointing, I realized, you know what, guys? When this happened, when Aaron had the oil poured over him, what happened that day? He was commissioned. Yes. This was the day that he was commissioned yeah. to his priestly service, yeah. right? It's so true, Colette. I mean, if you think about it, he was called to full-time ministry in, yeah. uh, in modern terms. I mean, this was the day that set him and his sons off mm -hmm. to stand in that honored place. And, you know, what I realized is even if you look through history, the changing of the God, those called to that honored place, those champions were specialists. Mm -hmm. These weren't just common soldiers brought out. These were honored men who were called into a special unit, a special corp that would guard the king with their lives. Love it. And I love this imagery of us coming as the specialists to <laughs> guard Christ and guard his, his mandate and to stand and to protect and to serve him no matter what. Who now? What I I love about this, I can just see it. I can see all of you, <laughs> you guys, you next gen prophets out there, and uh, we got to meet so many of you on mm -hmm. this trip, and I, and all of your faces are are coming uh, to my mind here as <laughs> yep. I'm talking, and and I'm seeing all of you in those busbies and those 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 pants and their swords and their they they guns the rifles, and there yeah. was rifles. Oh. I call them guns, whatever. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> and and it's like yes, guys, we are champions. Now, if you can just realize how the anointing fits mm. into this actually it changes everything yes. because the anointing should empower us that's right how many of you guys know all these glory seekers and you know what i mean they go from church to church ministry to ministry to experience god mm. it becomes a bit like a drug yes an addiction whereby I, I don't feel Christian enough, I don't feel holy enough, mm. unless I'm falling out, unless yep. I'm having some kind of spiritual experience. And we kind of pick up this doctrine, especially as prophets, because we crave the presence of Jesus so yes. much. We pick up this doctrine that the anointing is there to make us feel closer to God. Mm, that's true. And look, I'm not saying the anointing doesn't make us feel closer to God. Mm. I'm just saying that the anointing should have 
purpose. Yes. Let me tell you something. Moses didn't sprinkle oil over Aaron every single day. No. Nope. He didn't get splashed every five minutes. Mm -hmm. There was a very specific reason yes. that he was so anointed. Oh, and it was because he was being called to yes. service. And when I thought of that, I was like, oh my goodness, what mm. are we seeing in the prophetic move today? Oh my goodness, We're watching yes. prophets go from meeting to meeting, wanting a new anointing, wanting a new mm. experience. And I have to ask, I have to ask, what did you do with mm. the last experience yes. with God? Yes. Because the moment you experience the anointing, it should equip you and yes. arm you and commission mm. you on assignment. That's right. That's right. You know what I like about that is I'm just looking at just coming with the King's God and that again, call it. It's like I see that in the spirit. You look at how Saul got anointed and he fell down and he prophesied with the with the prophets. You see every time God did something significant with a man or woman of God, they fell under the power. Then afterwards they did business. Ooh, come on. You see, what I'm seeing is I'm not, not, you know, I love what God is doing and I love seeing people fall under the power because that peace that is over them and you can see God doing a work inside of them is phenomenal and we need it. Amen. But the thing is what I'm looking at and because you're a champion and you're a prophet, when we go into church service, guys, we're being called to stand at attention. We've been called to stand at God and to protect what God is trying to do in the service. Now, think about that. If you are there to protect and to serve, you can't be falling out. <laughs> Your eyes have to be focused in the spirit to see what God needs to do. Is there somebody manifesting? Is there somebody with a broken heart? Is there a demon trying to disrupt the meeting? Well, then you should be standing in the spirit and protecting and saying no further. Ooh, you know... When I look just personally at every encounter that I've had with the Lord Jesus, all the Holy Spirit, all the Father, in every single one of those encounters, I received a direction. Mm -hmm. I had an experience that maybe removed something yes. from me or added something to me. And I even look at Aaron because, you know, they had to be in their linen efforts. Yeah. And I look at how they were anointed and then they were clothed. He got on yes. his breastplate. And it was an entire ceremony of being clothed one step at a time. And I wonder, you know, prophets are... Are we missing it sometimes and that we run so quickly again into a new spiritual experience with the Lord that we don't wait long Ooh. enough for him to clothe us in the weapons of warfare, in yeah. the armor and in the uniform mm. that he needs us to wear to do his work in the kingdom. Mm. What are we doing with the anointings that we have? Yes. Because Amen. if we are not taking this experience, this oil that we receive and then using it, then we're just doing layer upon layer upon layer and not going anywhere. Mm. What I see in the spirit is that you only need the right tools for the job. When you are called to stand at God, like we saw today, they had a rifle mm -hmm. and they had a sword. And that is all they so had. Good. They didn't have a spear. They didn't have, you know, a pistol on the side. They didn't have a hand grenade. They didn't have, because that was not what they needed today. Come they weren't on. going into battle. They were guarding Come the king. On. So guess what? They had the weapons they needed. They had the rifle. And if they, if the rifle wouldn't work, they had a sword and that would do the job they needed. And that's what I see prophet is that you need to be equipped with the right tools. Because so when you do, you're standing there ready. You're not being fumbling around trying to find something and knocking into everything else. You need to be focused. And that's why you are only being processed in the tools that you need right now. And I want to say this as well. Depending on the kind of encounter you yes. have with the Lord will depend on how you are armed. Thank you. You know, if the Lord Jesus is calling you to minister inner healing to people and to bind up those broken hearts, you're not going to have this mighty rushing wind mm -hmm. slamming you to the ground and dragging you around the no, sanctuary. Exactly. You're not going to have such an experience. Why? Because the Lord is going to match the experience in the anointing mm. to your mandate, That's to right. your commissioning. Yes. So if you are called to heal the brokenhearted, I promise you, you're going to experience the anointing that heals the yes. broken heart. 
started. Mm. Now, if the Lord wants you to begin moving in deliverance and in power, take a good guess, the kind of anointing that you're going to need to experience. Fire, fire. There's going to be so much fire. You're going to be slain in the spirit. You're going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit yep. because you need to get yourself up off that floor afterwards and you need to go cast out a demon. Thank you. So depending on how God wants to use you. I yes. love what you said, Craig, about the weapons that we are given. Is it a sword? Is it a rifle? What is it that we're being given? Well, it matches the anointing. And and this is what I'd like to encourage you on, prophets, is that stop looking at the experiences others have with God. Mm -hmm. Because the experience that you have with the anointing is a direct compliment oh, to how you need yes, to be armed. So yes. if God needs you to heal the brokenhearted, why should he slay you in the spirit all the time? Why do you need this rushing experience with the Holy Spirit? Now, I really want to shake this out of the church. And you know what I love about the next gen prophets is that you guys are on the same thought process as me. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm seeing God move. But when do we as a church stop just having the experiences and then do something with the power. Thank you. And yes, that's really yes, where yes. our heart is at. Mm -hmm. But I also want to challenge you um, to say, stop comparing yourself to the experiences other yes. people have too, Amen. because you're not called to, to carry that weapon. That's right. You're not called to wear their armor. No. You're called to wear the armor that God has given you. Mm, that's so good because just think about it. If you're not anointed for it and you try, let's say you're not anointed to do deliverance. I mean, we all want to because we want to set the captives free. But if you're not, if that's not your position, well, you're going to feel deflated and you're going to feel like you're not serving the Lord properly because you didn't do the job. Well, it's Ooh. not. If you're there to heal the brokenhearted, mm, if you're there to on. heal, guess what? Please heal. Because to, if you don't, someone is going home tonight and they're going to think that God doesn't love them. So good. They're going to think that Jesus overlooked them and they're going back to another week of trying to figure out how to be healed when you could have been in the right place come on so stop putting yourself under that pressure i see so many prophets that are so deflated and saying i'm not serving god right yes you are not serving god right because you'd keep trying to do everybody else's job stop go back get in place and start doing it properly Oh, come on, guys. I love this so, so much. Um, we're about to get on a plane, actually, in a couple of hours <laughs> as we, we podcast here. But when we land, I hope that you guys are already connected with us mm -hmm. on MyPropheticTribe.com. Mm -hmm. I have so many exciting new things that we're going to be doing on our tribe in the mm -hmm. next couple of months. I've got a new curriculum of training for the Next Gen Prophets. Guys, about a year ago, I said to the Lord, Lord, I want an army of prophets, next yes. gen prophets, champions that you can release into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Champions that put themselves aside, but you first and truly bring healing to the body. And he has begun to bring those prophets to us from the north, <laughs> south, east and west. Yeah. And now I realize it's not enough that yeah. I just call in the prophets. Now it's time for me to arm you. Yes, we've got our podcast, yep. but Amen. I want to get more involved in your process. I want to do more training That's to right. really get involved. And we're going to begin doing that on myprophetictribe.com. So if you're not already part of our tribe, please, now is the time to jump in, yes. get connected. Um, you want to get in at the beginning as I start the curriculum, mm -hmm. because if you come in halfway through, you're going to miss a whole lot. Yes. So get in with what God is doing in this Thank prophetic you. move. Amen. Myprophetictribe.com. Go sign up. We'll see you there. We love you guys. And hey, stick around because in the next two podcasts, we're going to look at the work of the enemy and how to discern oppression. And then in the third one, we're going to take a really honest look on the difference between the anointing and emotionalism and how we as humans discern through our own human spirits. Love you guys. Come on, take those weapons. Let's get in position. See you.